live from WTVO Rockford and your home team. Eyewitness News at 5 starts now. Today marks one of the biggest moments in American history, the end of slavery. The racial history lesson a pastor says we must learn from to make sure it doesn't happen again moving forward. And today wraps up a week of competition at the USA BMX Midwest Nationals in Rockford. The big winners aren't just limited to the racetrack. Plus, travelers flying this weekend were left frustrated and sometimes stranded. The White House threatens to step in to fix the problem if airlines don't. Good evening, I'm Marissa Lesner. Thanks for joining us tonight. Today, across the nation and here in the state line, people honor Juneteenth. It's the day that African Americans finally and officially became free from slavery. Amory Wilder was at a local celebration for that special occasion. Amory. Marissa, Juneteenth is considered the longest running black holiday, but didn't become federally recognized until last year. However, organizers have been hosting this event for over 30 years before it became popular. People see African American people protesting or trying to fight for justice and they think, well, Martin Luther King already solved that. Well, you don't know history. On Sunday, people showed up at Mississippi Park to celebrate Juneteenth a national holiday created to commemorate the day in 1865 when Union soldiers arrived in Galveston, Texas to order freedom of enslaved people. Pastor of New Zion Baptist Church, K. Edward Copeland, says the truth is what sets us free. And the truth is that enslaved people did not receive word of their liberation until two and a half years after they were set free. And those same types of shenanigans, those sh same types of dynamics are sort of present in today's society. Copeland adds, if we learn from the past, it could help us navigate issues that may arise in the future. He explains how faith and Juneteenth go hand in hand. God loves all his children and God created us in his image and none of us should discount or denigrate the image of God in others whether that be based upon color, socioeconomic status, ethnicity, all of those types of things. Martisha Brown is a volunteer for the celebration. She says this day is important, not only for the black community, but for everyone. It's an opportunity for us to come together, to collaborate, to celebrate the emancipation of African, African Americans, and also to have some really critical conversations on how do we continue to work together and continue to ensure that all of our people have freedom. You still have time to get out there and enjoy some live music and a pageant crowning. The celebration doesn't wrap up until 8.30. Marissa? All right, thanks, Amory. Another Juneteenth celebration comes with an award for one distinguished member of our community. Zion Lutheran Church held its Juneteenth worship celebration at Patriots Gateway this morning. Along with gospel music, there were speakers who touched on what the day means to them. The Zion Legacy Award was awarded to Ronald Simmons, a longtime member of the church. After retiring as a research chemist, he became a GED teacher for Rock Valley's Elevate program, helping young pe people finish their education and become successful. He calls that his biggest accomplishment. I always felt liberated, but I also felt that Juneteenth just gave us the right to love ourselves, to love one another, and to know that we're equal and just as important as any other citizen in the United States. The service was followed by a traditional soul food lunch. Train track repairs will shut down a busy Rockford Street for a few days this week. Kilburn Avenue near the railroad tracks will be closed tomorrow. That's between Auburn and Whitman. IDOT says it should reopen by Wednesday. A Lena woman is charged after crashing an ATV with five kids on board. The Joe Davies County Sheriff's Department says the crash happened just before midnight on North Williams Road in Nora. They say 43-year-old Jessica Lawson lost control on loose gravel on a curved part of the road and flipped the ATV. One child was taken to Freeport Memorial Hospital. All the kids were between the ages of 10 and 14. Lawson is charged with failure to reduce speed and operating an ATV on a roadway. The area's biggest blood center will move into a new home in downtown Rockford. The Rock River Valley Blood Center will hold a ribbon cutting tomorrow morning at its brand new location on Longwood Street. That's just next door from where it is now on 6th Street. 
The 8,700 square foot facility will include private rooms for donors, administrative offices, and the blood lab will remain at the 6th Street location. A Rockford competition hosts some of the best bikers from all around the world. It's part of the USA BMX Midwest Nationals at Cyril's Park. The four-day event wraps up today. Bikers as young as two years old compete, but the ones going home with the trophies aren't the only winners here today. We've got 14 to 1,500 riders. You're going to have six, 7,000 people total, vendors. You've got hotels, restaurants, uh, all, all the different amenities involved. And all those people are here for since Tuesday to today. All the people coming in town and staying in hotels and brings a lot of money into the city of Rockford. This is the 35th year Rockford has hosted the Midwest Nationals. The summer travel season is here, but it's getting harder to reach your destination through the air. Staff shortages forced airlines to cancel thousands of flights nationwide. We checked with the website FlightAware. We found that in the past 24 hours alone, there have been roughly 300 delays and dozens of canceled flights at O'Hare and Midway airports in Chicago, leaving travelers frustrated. First notification said your flight's delayed. The very second text was, actually, it's canceled. The industry is just stretched to the breaking point, and instead of bending when something bad happens, it just snaps and falls apart. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg is urging airlines to fix the disruptions and better communicate with customers. He also added that if airlines fail to protect flyers, he could take legal action against them, but he'll wait to see what happens over the rest of the summer first. Welcome back. The White House tries to calm fears that the country is headed into a recession as it seeks new ideas to help curb the highest inflation in 40 years. Lucas Tomlinson reports one of those ideas could be to suspend the federal gas tax. With inflation spiking at its sharpest pace in decades, the nation's bleak economic outlook now appears to be the primary challenge for the White House as it heads into the midterm elections. Prices are unacceptably high right now, and that's why the president has said we need to make this our top economic focus and do everything that we can to get them down. A recent AP NORC poll found that just two in ten Americans think the economy is doing well. Last week's decision by the Fed to raise interest rates is likely to drive prices even higher. All of those factors are fueling fears that a recession could be on the horizon. The dominant probability would be that by the end of next year, uh, we would be seeing a recession in the American economy. Biden's Treasury Secretary painting a different picture, pointing to strong consumer spending and a record low unemployment rate as signs the situation could soon rebound. The labor market is recovered and we have reached full employment. It's natural now that we expect a transition to steady and stable growth. But I don't think a recession is at all, at all inevitable. Americans are getting hit particularly hard at the gas pump. Some lawmakers have floated the idea of suspending the federal gas tax, something the administration could be open to. As gas prices have risen a great deal and it's clearly burdening households. And that's an idea that's certainly worth considering. As Lucas Tomlinson reporting that federal gas tax is about 18 cents per gallon. Now, your first warned weather forecast from meteorologist Jordan Wolf. Oh, we are now three for three on perfect days here this weekend. Temperatures made it up into the 80s once again, underneath clear skies and high pressure. We were in the 80s yesterday as well as the day before, so nearly a perfect weekend. Maybe a little bit warmer today than what we would have expected, what we at least would have wanted with temperatures into the mid-80s and even close to upper 80s in a couple of areas. But look at that sunshine out there. Sky, sky track camera overlooking the Park Hills Golf Course out in Freeport showing those blue skies. Just partly cloudy skies now here this afternoon as we do have a disturbance moving just to our north, but it is actually keeping us dry because of that high pressure remaining in the area. That high pressure very evident now moving across Indiana and Ohio. We see that circular pattern of those winds. We are now under the south wind, and that's causing those temperatures to increase 
just a little bit here this afternoon compared to what we had yesterday. We're also seeing some of these temperatures into the 90s that will work their way into our area during the day tomorrow. So something to keep an eye on as we get later on here into the day. Locally, though, right now we still see those temperatures in the mid-80s. 86 degrees in Rockford, 84 in Rochelle, 83 in DeKalb. Heat index values are actually just a couple degrees cooler than the actual temperature. That's because of the low humidity as well as the wind that we have out of the south. Through the rest of the night tonight, though, temperatures fall back into the 60s, not nearly as cold as where we were earlier this morning. Temperatures actually fell to 46 degrees at the Rockford Airport, almost setting a new record for our record low temperature for today. But we are into the upper, or the low 60s for the day tomorrow, so quite a bit warmer than where we were earlier this morning. But we still hold on to those clear skies. Temperatures during the day tomorrow really get going as our temperatures get up into the 90s. 94 degrees officially for our high temperature. Notice that breeze out of the south might keep us feeling just a little bit cooler as well as dew point values will be back into the 50s and 60s so quite a bit more comfortable than what we had at least last week but it'll still definitely feel hot and sticky. That high pressure definitely working its way over the area. Any storm chances like the system moving over us right now will continue to remain to our north and to our east as they go up and over that ridge of high pressure. When that high pressure begins to break down as we get later on into the week, notice some of these storms beginning to fire up across the plains in the Midwest. That's with the cold front that will break down that ridge as we get later on into the week. Notice our temperatures here overnight tonight. We fall back into the 60s. During the day tomorrow, we're into the 90s across much of the area, and that south wind really helping to get those temperatures going right around that 70-degree mark overnight the next night, and then we're into the mid and even upper 90s for the next day after that. So notice our high temperatures for the rest of this week. We're at 94 for Monday, 97 for Tuesday. Cold front brings us into the 80s for Wednesday, but we still could see some storm chances along with that cold front as well. That cold front does bring us storm chances. The Storm Prediction Center putting an outlook list, listing us under a one, level one out of five chance for severe risk. So we could be seeing that severe weather, but something we'll definitely be keeping an eye on here this week. Temperatures are very warm for the next couple of days into the 90s, close to triple digits. But we do see that cold front bring us back down, but not too far as we're still holding on to the upper 80s and 90s all the way through into next weekend. Now sports with Reagan Holgate. You can maybe say that Cubs fans have been on cloud nine the past two days with two electric wins at Wrigley Field with the Braves in town. They were looking to make it three today. Things started out hot, but not in favor of the Cubs. Top of the first, Travis Darnoud gets a hold of this one deep left field, and that would be out of there. That would be his ninth home run of the season and gives the lead to the Braves at three to zero. Fifth inning now. Braves already scored two in this one, and then comes this hit. For Matt Olson, deep left center comes off the vines and that would add another run for the Braves. The Braves silenced the loud crowds at Wrigley today, winning this one 6-0. Last game of the series for the White Sox before they head home to Chicago and they'll be looking to clinch one more in Houston. First pitch is at 6 o'clock. The Beloit Sky Carp are about 400 miles to the east this week in East Lake, Ohio to face the Lake County Captains for a six-game series. Zach King dealt six shutout innings today with a Bennett Hostedler homer to secure the win 7-3 and take the series. They'll travel to Lansing, Michigan this week to take on the Lugnuts. Harlem High School's reputation as a bowling powerhouse has been elevated even more. Both the boys and the girls teams have won national team championships this weekend at the U.S. High School Bowling Nationals. The tournament was held in Louisville, Kentucky. For the Harlem girls, this is their fourth national championship in six years. The boys' championship is their first. It, was, it tops their second place finish in 2017. Congratulations to the Huskies. Colorado was looking to capitalize off of their one-game lead in Game 2 of the Stanley Cup Finals. Valerie Nishushkin scored his seventh and eighth goals of the playoffs, while Kale McCarr notched two goals in the third period to propel the Avalanche to an astounding 7-0 victory. That mark is the biggest shutout win in Stanley Cup history. Coach Jared Bednar said it was about as close to a perfect game that he could get from his players. The Avalanche travel to Tampa tomorrow for Game 3, where the Lightning will look to bounce back. Teams around the state line took to social media day today to show their love and support for all the dads and father figures who make this world go round. To those who make a difference on and off the court, on and off the field, we celebrate you today 
and it wouldn't be right of me to get through this without giving a shout out to my dad. If I were home, I know we would be teeing it up on the golf course. Speaking of on the golf course, it's the final day of the U.S. Open, and this leaderboard is stacked. It's just about anybody's for the taking down the stretch. Take a look at where things stand as of a few minutes ago. The Young Guns, Matt Fitzpatrick and Will Zalatoris battling it out. Matt currently sitting at five under and Will Zalatoris. I think he just moved down a little bit. Masters champion Scotty Scheffler holding on at three under Hideki Matsuyama in solo fourth after a mass full five under 65 and then maybe the fan favorite the one who gets the Boston crowds on their feet Rory McIlroy he sits at two under trying to get it done again for the first time in eight years we are just a few holes away from naming the 122nd U.S. Open champion welcome back well it was a perfect day out there for Father's Day. Really a perfect right. weekend for all the dads. I know my husband yep. made it out on the golf course today. I think a lot of dads probably did. A very perfect weekend to go golfing. Temperatures made it yeah. all the way up into the 80s every single day this weekend. We were a little bit cooler yesterday. Our temperatures actually this morning dropped all the way down into the upper 40s, 46 degrees. But we're not talking about anything chilly here for this seven-day forecast. Temperatures are all the way back up into the 90s starting tomorrow. 94 degrees on Monday, 97 on Tuesday. Temperatures could be up into the 90s. That means dew points into the 60s and 70s. And heat index values could be into triple digits, especially there on Tuesday as well. So we want to make sure you are taking your heat safety precautions, at least for Monday and Tuesday here this week. Luckily, we do get a little bit of a break from at least the temperatures into the upper 90s there as a cold front comes through Tuesday night into Wednesday. Could bring us some storm chances as well. We'll have to keep an eye on that as we get later on into, here, into the week. The temperatures remain in the upper 80s and into the low 90s throughout the rest of the week and into next weekend as well. Summer is here. Have a great night.